welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiesma, also known as EJ. And today uh, I have quite a subject, I think. Uh, I think we can agree that uh, this subject we could talk about for hours and hours and hours. And there probably never will be one straight answer. So yeah, I'm going to talk about a little bit about sick orchids, orchids that do have pests or uh, deficiencies. Um, I'm not completely going to talk about how I treat, uh, treat them. I will uh, a little bit in the end of the video, but th therefore there are too many uh, different uh, deficiencies, uh, different viruses to go all over them one by one. Uh, so that's not what I'm going to do, but um, uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. And before I'm going to do that, I just wanted to say a thank you to uh, Juanita Milton9523. She was asking a question about a yellow, uh, uh, a fell <laughs> that suddenly does get uh, yellow tips on the leaves. Uh, and I did also get a question of Hermine uh, Noben, uh, 88. And she did ask a question about her epidendrum. She has it on her terrace outside. It will come inside soon. She's from Belgium, so similar weather conditions. But uh, she had it uh, happen now two times that it did make a spike, but suddenly the, the butts uh, drop off. And if I had any experience with uh, epidendrums and uh, if I had any clue what this could uh, cause. So uh, I'm going to over. Uh, I'm going to answer those questions while I'm uh, talking about my approach. So everything I say is what I do. I'm not saying you have to do it or this is the way, uh, the only way to do it. This is just my way, uh, how my approach basically on on uh, how to go uh, when you see something is off with your orchids, and that's basically it. Uh, it I go over a few steps. Because first of all, and most of all, we need to find the problem if we have pests, if we have a deficiency, or if we have a virus, for example. That is the first thing. So, uh, and especially when I was new to orchids, it's very, very difficult to find the problem. Uh, the more experience you get, the faster you know in at least which corner, so to speak, in which area you need to look. But um, there, I think there are some steps that might be beneficial. So that's uh, why I'm making these uh, videos. But uh, once again, uh, thank you so much for uh, inspiring me, me to making this uh, video. Anyhow, so I like to think uh, uh, at it as, uh, for example, if you would build a house. Well, first of all, uh, you need a good foundation for your house to build it on. Because if that foundation is off, I think you can build a beautiful home, but it really is asking for trouble. On the short end or on the long end, you will have troubles because your foundation, your balance, where everything needs to be built on is off from the get-go. So that's how I uh, try to look at it. Maybe you already guessed it, but I'm referring to the root system of our plants. I think that is one of the most important factors if something is off. And I think uh, quite often it is not highlighted as much when people f uh, ask for uh, uh, help over on Facebook. I see this a lot. Uh, mentioned uh, uh, not enough that it is probably or it starts with a problem of the roots. Let me explain. So, for example, let's let's take the fail from uh, uh, from uh, you and Ida. Uh, I hope you I pr did pronounce your names right. But you and Ida, you did ask me you had a fail which was doing well. It had beautiful green leaves, and suddenly the leaf tips start to yellowing up. So that is obviously a problem. Yes, because it shouldn't be doing that. Well, my guess, and I'm pretty sure if you would take pictures and post it over on Facebook, uh, well, a lot, maybe not nine out of 10 people, but a lot of comments 
will say you have a calcium deficiency, probably a calcium deficiency. It could be magnesium, it can be nitrogen, but those have a tendency to show up a little bit different if you have a, uh, a, lack of, a, a leak of it, a deficiency on those. But calcium is mostly known or recognized by when you have new growth and those start uh, getting uh, uh, black tips, starting to rot off. That's most, in most cases, is a calcium deficiency. So yes, it would be technically speaking uh, wise to give somebody a advice uh, to get it, to give your orchid more calcium. Yes, that is true because that's the problem. Uh, let's assume that is the problem. But how can you give your plant more calcium if it doesn't have roots or it has just a few roots that are not really working anymore or if something is happening with the pH in the pot, which are not basically the roots, but it is uh, um, goes hand in hand with the roots. You can give, in that case, as much calcium to your plant as you, as, as you like, but it cannot uptake the calcium. So there's the problem. So yes, you have a deficiency and yes, it's showing, but you first need to focus on your roots. So that will always be my first advice. If you have a new, a fairly new orchid that shows signs of that, I also will say, well, check the root system and thereby also check your media. So I did give that advice as well to uh, you, Anita. Check your media, because if it has a good root system, or there are quite some roots that seem to be okay, then it's probably highly likely that, uh, or a big chance, let me put it like that, that you need to change your media as well. And I'm referring to bark and sphagnum moss. I don't have that problem anymore because I ha grow them in inorganic media, pumice. So my media will not go off. So that's the beauty of uh, inorganic. But that's a side note. Um, but yeah, that is also a very common problem that is not mentioned as much as I personally would see because that it just it is a big problem. And it goes basically hand in hand with your roots. So if you have roots, but you have a, a pH that's completely off, again, your plant cannot uptake the calcium, so it will not get the calcium that it needs. So thereby it will, as a side effect, show a deficiency in calcium in this case. So Juanita uh, did uh, comment me back one or two days later that she said, yeah, my media is definitely off. Probably you could smell it. You get a mushroom type of smell. So yeah, that's the first step. You need to repot it and um, get fresh media in. And then I would adv advise if uh, your media is good uh, again, or it's still good, and you don't have the roots, start working and focusing on getting roots uh, uh, in that pot, letting your orchid grow roots. My approach to that would be, or my suggestion would be, to use at least RO water or rainwater with kelp or seaweed, just a little bit, like I do when I transfer my uh, orchids into, a, in, into the self-watering setup, in the semi-hydroponic setup. I have videos on that, and you will see that the first step that I will do is uh, use some uh, algae, uh, some, some seaweed, I'm sorry, not algae, <laughs> seaweed, uh, kelp, to uh, get that natural hormones in there that, that I see really great responses of my orchids uh, to that hormones and they will start grow new roots. And once those, once those roots get settled in old enough and with a fail, you will see them green up then they are, are, are old enough to uh, start to uptake water and also fertilizer. And if that is happening, then you can start to focus on your calcium. And you don't need a overload or overdose of calcium with a deficiency. You need to make sure that the calcium is in there and that your plant has all the abilities that you can give them to uptake the calcium. I don't feed my ox with a high parts per million as you probably know and i don't uh, at the current uh, at this moment i don't see any deficiency i had a little bit of a deficiency of uh, magnesium deficiency i should say and uh, this summer but uh, this, this problem se uh, seems to be solved so um 
but yes, low dosages. And just a little bit extra Epsom salt in that case, I did, did give my uh, plants. And it seemed to be uh, adjusting uh, or uh, getting rid of the problem. And then, uh, like I said earlier, you need to focus on your pH. So water with a nice pH. You have, if you Google it, you will find the right pH uh, for uh, orchids to get, to make the calcium uh, very easy to obtain. There will be, uh, I don't have those charts, but it's very easily find and you probably know how to find them. Otherwise, uh, leave a, a comment and I will help you uh, in if you do, cannot find them. But, um, so yeah. Thus, that's the first approach, the roots. It's, it's for me basically always the roots. If you have pests on your orchids, you not necessarily need to look at your roots. But then again, if you have pests, you start to notice things. Well, let, uh, let's uh, take that, uh, that uh, comment from Hermine um, about her epidendrum. I took my epidendrum out there, one of my epidendrums. Mine do not very well. They are staying kind of small i'm not doing very well with them i have one that's fairly big it's the white one but these red ones been through a lot and um they do grow they do grow uh, uh nice roots they bloom they bloom every time for me but the structures are not not very big so they not really do enjoy a sim hydroponic setup in my case but that wasn't your question your question was about the blooms why doesn't it bloom you also mentioned that you had mealy bugs on your epidendrums if that could be the case so yes that can be the case you can have small teeny tiny mealy bugs on your buds on your flower stem on your flower spike and they take out the juices and they drink it and they eat basically uh, the flower spike and thereby the buds cannot develop anymore and they will start rotting and drying up and falling off so yes that's there's a possibility i just wanted to mention that in let's say eight out of ten times if i had a similar problem with my buds and like i said in my case i have thrips so I don't have a uh, mealy box or I do have mealy box, but more on the leaves, not necessarily on the blooms. So if you don't see a mealy box, you could have teeny tiny ones that you cannot see with your eyes. But like I said, in most cases I have thrips and thrips you can, if they are, uh, uh, if you have adults, those are these little black uh, stripy shaped uh, uh, box which you can easily uh, quite easily see with your naked eye but the larvae and the eggs well no you cannot see them so you may have them but you don't know that could be a problem and while we're at the subject if uh, I, I will make a separate video about this but if you have them so you can have the mini box on there or the trips maybe you want to try this product it's called edulux it's a bio product they have the systemic, but this is a non-systemic. And I try this for over a year now, especially with thrips, and it works wonders. And why I love it? Well, first of all, it, call, it, it kills the thrips and also mealy bugs, and they really hate it as well. But thrips were very hard for me to get rid of. Well, this, this really, ha really works wonders for me. But what I do like, you can spray it on the blooms and on the buds, and in my case, the, it, this product doesn't affect the blooms and it doesn't affect the buds so they keep on blooming and the buds keep on growing and they will bloom like never ever and uh, like never anything had happened to them so that's the beauty of this product i will like i said I make a separate video about it but i would like to have yeah that sounds strange and i shouldn't mention it but at least one adult adult uh thrip so i can follow it with my camera so you can see it move i can use then this product and then you can see that it will not move anymore that's the type of video i'm waiting for oh i shouldn't say that out loud i know i know but yeah that would be a good video anyhow a side note but it's a very 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 great tip i think i can give you this is the best product by far so far that i did find on thrips anyhow worth mentioning i think if you have mealy box, you may have seen my other video that I uh, um, uploaded once, how I deal with, with pests, and that is a oil-based solution. So I would suggest 
uh, if you have mealybugs, spray it on your plant and it works wonders. Because of the oil, it does, does get very sticky and your mealybugs will die. And you don't have to repeat it. I did forget to mention that. This one you would do for three times. So you start spraying them. Seven days later, you will spray them again. So basically soak them. And then again, seven days uh, later, you will soak the plant again. Because you need a cycle, this is working for about two to three days. It, it needs to be in contact with the pest, with the thrip in this case. Uh, if it doesn't have been in contact, so new eggs or new larvae uh, will start eating your plants again. So that's why you need to spray them uh, three times in a uh, time frame from uh, about three weeks. And that works wonders. I, I, that's very important to mention. I just followed the instructions on the box. I diluted it. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I just uh, used a little uh, less liters, but you will... Uh, uh, can adjust the amount that they are suggesting. It's very easy. Uh, once again, if it if it doesn't work or you're not completely sure, you can ask me in the comments and it will help you. But anyhow, so yeah, that's that's a product you need uh, at least three times in a row. If you use the oil solution for uh, the mini box, you don't. You you should be good for, to go for at least a few months, three to four months at least, because it's very sticky and it will stay on your plant and keeps on being sticky. Uh, and also, if you do grow organically and you have mealybugs, I would suggest if you can uh, repot your orchid because probably the pests will be in your media as well. Or use this product and soak your pot with it. Maybe let it uh, soak for half an hour. So fill it up to the rim of the pot, this, um, this diluted uh, uh, pesticide. Let it stay in there and then take it out. I'm not sure. I've never, never done that before myself. But I think your, your orchids will be okay. But just to make sure that you at least have something in your pots as well. Because they like the bark and they like the sphagnum moss, the mealybugs. They will go in there and survive. Because you only sprayed everything that is coming out of your pot basically. So uh, that's a big suggestion as well. You need to work with what's inside of the pot as well, especially if you have a sort of uh, problem, if you have quite some mealybugs, you need to do that or scale or anything. I found that if I spray this a little bit on, on the pots uh, with thrips, in my case, uh, so far it was, uh, was okay. But if they would keep coming back, I certainly would give my plants a soak with this as well. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's a bit of a long side note, but it's very important. And this video is about uh, pests as well. So I needed to explain that to, uh, to help you out there. So that is basically, um, would be my answers to those two questions. But then again, coming back to my approach. So we did uh, discuss the roots. We did have a look at the roots. Let's assume that the roots are okay, but your plant is still is not looking well. Uh, then... If you have a deficiency, you need to look into deficiencies. You need to find uh, what you can expect when you have a calcium deficiency, when you have a magnesium deficiency or a nitrate deficiency, nitrogen, I should say, I'm sorry, uh, or anything else may leaking. And that is very hard to, ex to be exact, what the, uh, to, to really know what a problem is. It's not that easy. So I don't, uh, make a videos on it because I, I think I cannot give a clear, very clear answer. So I'm not going into detail too much. Like I said, I had a magnesium uh, deficiency, I think, that there were ye uh, leaves yellowing up, le uh, yellow spotches, uh, spots, I should say, on the leaves, that kind of stuff. And leaves did get, get paler and yeah, that yellowing started up with orchids that shouldn't have a yellow type of color in there. Some orchids do have more, a bit of green yellowish leaves, but if, if they have those darker leaves, um, darker greener leaves, I should say, then, and they start to yellow up, you might, might have, you might have a, a magnesium or a, a nitrogen problem there. Once again, it's too difficult to, to point out in one video. If you really enjoy the subject, I might make one video out of it. Please let me know. But yeah, it's very hard. So if you have a deficiency of any kind, I almost, 
I almost try to say it doesn't really matter. Well, it, of, of course it doesn't matter, but if you have a well-balanced fertilizer with everything in it, it kind of shouldn't uh, matter which type of deficiency you have. I know a lot of growers will not agree with this or say, yeah, but what I'm referring to, if you have everything in there, if you have calcium in there, magnesium and your nitrogen, and you still have a deficiency, that's kind of strange, isn't it? Because you have it in your pot, you are in your water, so you are giving it uh, uh, to your plants, but they, they just don't take it uh, somehow because i think you don't need much uh, sometimes you may have a little uh, too less and you may have created a deficiency with especially with these larger big growing uh, plants but with my smaller fairly st stable growing consistently growing orchids i do not get those deficiencies not that often because i have a fertilizer in there with uh, maintains all the uh, elements that they need plus and here we are again I make sure that I have a pH that does vary so I have a calcium uh, magnesium powder in there to get to rise my pH but when I water I water with a lower pH so the plants have a certain amount of time where the pH goes from l lower uh, upwards higher and in that amount of time they have uh, the ability to uptake the nutrients that they need I hope that makes sense and for me it's very logical uh, but it did take me quite a few years to figure that out but that is basically what's happening so I had deficiencies while I in I think six seven years back while I have uh, the MSU fertilized for example nowadays I have the rain mix that has everything in it so that should be uh, good enough but uh, the MSU as well and still I have deficiencies and that was because I kept on feeding my orchid at the same pH I did lower it a little bit but I kept on feeding them on a low pH or lower pH I think it was something around 6.3 something like that but I kept using the same range of pH that is not very handy you need to vary you need to give all the opportunities to your plants to get that fertilizer in to get those nutrients and uh, nutrients in your plant so sometimes you may get a bit lower up to 5.8 for example a pH most of the times I vary between 6 and 6.3 that seems to do fine but um let's say once every two months at least or uh, once in a, uh, every uh, one and a half months something like that i like to lower the ph at a level of 5.8 that is the lowest that i go with my ph but just to make it a little bit easier for the plants to uptake those um, fertilizer those elements that they can uptake a bit easier with a lower ph i hope that does make sense i think it's very very important with deficiencies just uh, like i said in the beginning it's my approach it's my look at it but it's some uh, it's at least food through through uh, food for thought <laughs> at least and and of course we all have our different approach that's okay but i think i think it, well it works for me so there there something is is uh, at least doing better than it did before let's put it like that there will always be some problems uh, especially when you have as many plants as I have but overall I think I, I do uh, fairly well at least my plants do fairly well and it, it has a lot to do with pH like I said it's a side effect most of the times when you have deficiency it's a side effect from something different from the clue and you need to find that clue <laughs> and it's so hard I know I know but that's the beauty of YouTube the beauty of social media uh, where uh, that's why I do it as well I try to share as much information as I can and I always try to encourage you guys who watch this video to leave your experience in the comments as well for other growers to read as well that's how I learned I, from the comments from videos from uh, Facebook uh, just Google etc 
social media media yes that's a short <laughs> version but anyhow that's and that's the beauty and of course you can uh, you can ask growers that uh, you you can uh, meet in in real life that would be uh, great as well because they probably have the same climate as you do so that's that's a good way uh, uh, to to go to um, get uh, new information to get more experience in as well so anyhow so that's uh, that's my approach and then uh, for deficiencies and then you might have pests so if you're not sure if you have a deficiency or a pest I always check because the marks for example from spider mites might look at a deficiency if you're not that experienced nowadays i know it's spider mites they there's there's something happening most of the times and that's when you didn't discover them in time you get a grayish color underneath your leaves and you get these patches in the leaves uh yeah then there were spider mites and they probably have been there for quite a while <laughs> i learned that i did a hard way oh my dendrobiums they were my dendrobium family obsesses not even on my miltonia obsesses those have the spider mites uh, every single year and some of them at least twice a year but anyhow this was on my dendrobium family obsess and oh they look so terrible i had no idea and i thought it was a deficiency or something and then finally somewhere i uh, maybe a video i'm not sure anymore but uh, i did find uh, uh, uh spider mites and what kind of damage they can do to your orchids so i did uh, get this uh, cotton pad that you use to uh, remove makeup uh, i spray my solution on there my oil solution i fold it so i have a piece of that cotton underneath the leaf and on the top of the leaf and then i squeeze a little bit and then with a firm kind of firm grip you don't want to rip off the leaf of course but i will start from the base up to the point of the leaf then you can rub it a little bit and then open it up if you see a orange brownest a brownish uh, color you have spider mites and i once had the white spider mites but those in if i'm correct because it's years ago those have the same type of orange color but i know for sure the red spider mites will show up uh, will show you that color but again if you're not certain do several leaves because you may have chosen a leaf where only one or two were alive or were on the leaf so you do get a hint of orange and you maybe not even see it so try your leaves try your stem and if you still don't see that orange colors you you yeah you can pretty be, be pretty sure you don't have spider mites on that orchid so you have to look into further uh in, in, in further into it to see what <laughs> what is the problem i know i know it's a puzzle and it's um well, if you succeed in the end, it's a beautiful puzzle because you are getting more experience and you're starting to notice your problems. But in the beginning, oh my, it can be uh, can be quite a uh, a, a a rough path uh, path to go through. It took me uh, for me the the roughest part was uh, the the when I had pH off for over a year. My plants were going downhill. I had all kinds of deficiencies. Yes, I had because I had a way way too low pH in my pots in my reservoirs. But I had no idea until I did find found out and I did adjust the pH like we just discussed. And slowly but surely, my plants did start to do well and I had no deficiencies anymore because I changed the pH. I, I, I needed to mention that because it's so, so important. Okay, let's go back to, uh, to my approach. If you have some type of uh, virus, if you looked it up and you thought, uh, and you are, are you recognizing it? And you have something like this. I try not to let them touch, that's the first tip. Try not to let them touch other plants and don't touch it with your hands if you're gonna grab another one but I hope you can see that this is my uh, zygo come on uh, Lucendorf <laughs> just uh, did forget the name there for a second and have a look at that bulb it might be some sp uh, some uh, well it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's a virus it might be the ring spot virus or the other one I, I keep confusing those two but they, those are very very well known um, and for a moment i thought to be a few months back to i was like well this has a virus 
I cannot get it out, uh, maybe I need to throw it, throw it away. And I did get it out of the pot, which I will not do now because I need to, to touch my other orchids as well. But trust me, it had the roots and you see now the new growth putting out the roots. And I was like, oh, it has such a beautiful root system. I love this orchid so much and I probably can replace it. But the, uh, the new growth is looking so well and so strong. So I thought, yeah, you know what? Because I'm growing in a semi-hydroponic setup, I, I'm not uh, sharing water anyways. So I'm just going to let it be. It, it's performing very well, but it, it has those really ugly black spots on the leaves. I don't know if you can see it on the, the back leaves there and also on the bulbs. This is the, fairly, this is the newest bulb with the new growth and it still has those spots. So yeah, it still has that virus. I don't know what type of virus it is because i'm trying to put this back my approach with viruses just get over it um, a little bit uh, there are different videos on here on youtube on how you can use systemics etc uh, to uh, try to uh, get rid of the uh, viruses which are great videos but i personally uh, I really, really hate systemics. I really, really hate it. And and I, even though <laughs> this one works wonders, it's a bioproduct, I, I still kind of hate it, but I use this because like I said, it's a bioproduct. The systemics, I just don't want to do it. I, I am refusing to do it. So yes, I taking a big, big risk. I might lose this orchid for, for example. Why am I doing that? Well, first of all, uh, because I don't like to work with systemics on my hands to breathe in, to have around. It's just, it's just bad, I think. I do get it why people use it, don't get me wrong. But personally, I just don't want to have it in here. Um, and I also am a very strong believer that the best approach probably is to get your plant as strong as possible. Yes, I know if it has a virus, it is it is probably isn't as strong, but still this one is doing very well. So my focus on this Saigo, the Illusion Dove, is to grow it on and on, and hopefully one day it may start showing uh, those uh, beautiful, healthy, clean bulbs again. I know it may not, never ever going to happen but i think it is possible because the plants can also deal with viruses if it's happy if it's strong uh, it probably always will have some type of virus around it also the most healthy looking ones that's just how it is just how we are uh, we basically always have some some not so good bacteria around us or on our skin or inside of us etc but as long as we keep on uh, being healthy uh, being active uh, eating good and especially and, and drinking water I'm a strong believing uh, believer of drinking enough water per day anyhow it's a side note that's uh, me on a person but try to get healthy try to live a uh, less stressful life as you can I know that is probably the, the biggest challenge in life because stress is a very bad factor and that goes the same with your orchids I try to leave them as much as I can so I try to grow them on but I try not to repot them or to divide them or change the locations I keep them try to keep them in a spot where I think they are happy and keep on growing them keep on feeding them and getting them stronger and there may come a time where the ark is strong enough to battle the virus on its own and to settle it down to push it down and leave it in those older bulbs and the newer bulbs may uh, be clean and keep on being clean if that is the case and once there comes a time where it's reaching the edge of the pot and i need to repot it obviously i will take the old bulbs off i will it give it a fresh media to be sure to get all the leftovers of the viruses, the bacteria out of there and start as fresh as I can because I then think this plant can handle it. But now at this 
point of time and no it cannot handle it and the blooms are still looking fine so it's not a virus that is really going into the blooms yet uh, but if it really starts messing up the plant completely i throw it away but if in this case if it's growing such beautiful new growths new roots i uh, just keep on growing them and uh, just see how they will do in the end and uh, what i said i try to not let it touch other plants because it can spread throughout the leaves so that's a very uh, uh, great tip a great thing to watch as well and i had a different uh, plant over here that is this one it's my adaglossum french town and you can see that it has this spotting going on on the leaves it always had it from the gecko but it's growing nicely it's a bit of a climber and I did buy it with only one bulb and it's just a starting new growth and two or three spikes just just one bulb division and look at it I have it uh, for quite some years it's been repotted in this setup in 20 uh, 2020 it's now 23 so three years later so that would be one two three four years and so that's I had it in a different setup I didn't I, I probably have the uh, first repotting date in my notes but I it does grow one ball per year well actually yeah it, no of course it did uh, like I mentioned it had a new growth so that is that bulb so then it's a one two three yeah it's uh, <laughs> that new growth was already on there so yeah it's uh, it's uh, th uh, three years in my care now but anyhow it still has those uh, spots there but it does look very strong if you ask me it has a beautiful root system we have some older roots on there that was to be expected those die off eventually but inside of the pot trust me it has a beautiful root system it has very strong spikes and it always blooms for me so i'm just going to leave it like it is once again i can do this fairly easily because i grow in a semi-hydroponic setup and i don't share my water well actually <laughs> i'm sorry let, let's keep it here because otherwise they start touching leaves again and we just discussed that's not very handy so yeah um coming back uh one one more time to the fell because i had this fell out and i'm i hope you can see it i did do have a bit of this discoloration here on this leaf and i want to mention that and then i think uh we are pretty far with this video but um like i said uh it's it uh most of the times you get a calcium deficiency uh, response for somebody and also that's what I uh, was looking for or going through to is that a lot of people say uh, it's common with fails the older, le the older leaves do start fall off they do start to yellow up etc I agree and I do agree for most of the part with that it's how fails grow they grow out new leaves and all the leaves die off so that's probably what this will be doing uh, in the next growing season. So yes, that is true. But still, I think that in, in several cases we can do better. That fails may, if you go into the best potential of your plants, may uh, start to keep more leaves. Because let's say if you have a fell with five leaves and it's dropping two of the older leaves and people say, ah, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just what fells do. You're left with three leaves and most of my fells do grow one or two. Some go th go grow three, but most of them do grow th uh, two new leaves every season. So then you will be at the end of the season back to five and it starts losing uh, two again. You will be... Um, left with three three leaves again so yeah that is a sort of cycle and your plant may bloom and it's wonderful well but i then think that that plant should be able to do better and at least keep one extra leaf or grow one extra leaf and slowly build up to let's say i think i think a most healthy or a, a healthier uh fell should have six seven eight leaves the least and some fails depending on the parents and the hybrids that did go in there um, may have more leaves but i think yeah a healthy fell uh, should have six leaves N i'm not saying that my fails all have six leaves but that is in the back of my mind that is how i look at my plants i am like okay you have beautiful area roots you have a good root system 
but you don't have as much leaves, leaves as I would uh, love you to have. So what can I do? Do we need more light? How is the pH? What type of fertilizer do I give you, etc. So it's all coming back to the start of this video. Even though we not necessarily have a problem, but I see that a plant should, could do better, should do better, especially when you have it one or two years, because fells, because they are forcing them into bloom, most of my fells do need at least one year or two years to really settle down, settle in again, and get comfortable and slow on a more natural rate. Instead of pushing those spikes out, it's absolutely crazy. But anyhow, that is how the, this business works, apparently. But anyhow, so after two years, uh, basically what I'm trying to say, I would like to see more leaves on those fails. Just something that I like to do. I like to challenge myself and, and basically my plants to do, to do better, to get the best potential out of them. Sometimes we do succeed and sometimes we don't. But uh, I just wanted to mention that as well, because then, well, like I said, we're coming back to the roots again. That's, that's the foundation, you guys, if you ask me. It is so important. Well, anyhow, that was quite a story, but it was, those questions were beautiful. And I thought, yeah, it's, I, it, I do this so uh, often that I didn't realize that this is basically my approach. Every single time if I, when I see my orchids and I I'm, uh, try to look at them, uh, how are they doing? I'm just starting with the base, starting with the foundation, the roots, the root system. So I thought it's a good opportunity to make this video. Maybe I had some tips, maybe I had some ideas for you, maybe I inspired you guys. I hope so, I, that I did so. <laughs> and of course, like I said, uh, if you have any questions or uh, things weren't as clear, or you want to add something, please feel free to add it in the comment section uh, below. I love it. And like I, uh, no, not always, but uh, try to mention every single time is that I, I read your comments and I will get to them as soon as possible. So thank you uh, for that uh, in advance. And of course, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and you may want to share it with some people. That would be uh, great as well. And of course, if you, if you didn't already have, please consider subscribing to my channel. That would be awesome as well. Thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.